There is no limit to what North Korea can achieve when it gives up its nuclear weapons and embraces commerce and engagement with the rest of the world. You heard it right there. President Trump speaking in Singapore earlier this morning. One group seemed to be left out from the North Korea talks, and that would be the Europeans. Joining us now, news, uh, Fox News contributor Nigel Farage. You know, they are left out of all of this. Doesn't that represent a shift in our, America's, diplomatic focus? Oh, of course it does. And uh, we saw this at the G7. You see, Europe's very confused. You've got a European Union in Brussels that wants to represent the whole of Europe. Uh, but now we've got a new government in Italy, for example, who want to have an Italian voice. So there is this huge conflict and battle going on uh, within Europe as to who should speak for it. What I thought was really interesting was the photograph at G7 of all the leaders. This is, by the way, before President Trump decided to leave. And at the end of the photograph, at both ends, we had Mr Juncker and Mr Tusk, the bosses of the European Union. But, of course, they've not been elected, Stuart. They mm. have absolutely no direct accountability to the people and, because of that, no legitimacy on the world stage. So, however hard the European Union has tried to become a global player, it just yeah, doesn't you're right. work. You're right. What do you make of this idea that maybe there would be a Trump-Putin summit? Uh, uh, Putin seems to like the idea. President Trump voiced the idea. But if yeah. they did get to... Wouldn't that leave the Europeans even further out in the cold? Well, you would have thought on the face of it that a Russia... Uh, America summit at this stage would make the gap even bigger uh, within the G7. And yet, the new Italian Premier, Mr Conti, says we must improve relations and talk to Putin's Russia. I think what's happening here is the old guard, the old order uh, that existed for such a long time with Clintons and with Bushes and with various German, British, European leaders, that is all now crumbling. We're seeing a new world. We saw Brexit. We saw Trump. We've seen Hungarian elections produce a very strong leader. We've now got Italy, you know, the third yeah. biggest country in the Eurozone, with a different leader. And I think we're headed to a completely different place. And personally, I'm very pleased about Do that. Do you think that we're heading towards a different feeling among Europeans for President Trump? I mean, I would imagine that after that G7 turmoil and the blow-up, the Europeans would be just uh, apoplectic about uh, President Trump. But any sign that that's changing? Well, the old guard are apoplectic. Yeah. Mr Juncker, Mr Tusk, Mrs May, Mrs Merkel. But these represent yesterday's politics. There's a new politics coming in. Governments in Austria, governments in Hungary, governments, as I say, in Italy, and probably more countries to come over the next couple of years who actually think, do you know what? Trump stands up for America just as we're going to stand up for our own countries. And from that starting point, we can be friends and work together. The new world is coming. What's the European media making of the, uh, the NOCO agreement from last night? I know it's because uh, it would have hit first thing in the morning there. Yes, about 7 o'clock this morning yeah. we first heard about this. I watched it, drinking my early morning cup of tea, and I cheered loudly. I thought, <laughs> wow, this is, this is a good day for the world. And, but, you know, there are still those on the left of politics and, and in, in the liberal media who still cannot give the president any credit at all. Mm. Uh, and I think, actually, on a day like this, they demean themselves. When you've got, you know, potentially the most dangerous country in the world signing up to a programme, albeit it may take time, but signing up to a programme of denuclearization, that's a good moment to put left and right wing politics aside and to say well done, not just to Trump, but to Chairman Kim as well. It's exactly the same over here, Nigel. Time you paid a visit and start drinking coffee in the I'm... morning, not this tea stuff. Come on. I'll be in New York, I'll be in New York next week, OK? Then you're going to sit right next to me and I'm going to shake your hand. I will. Farage, I will. he's all right. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thank you, Nigel. Thank you very much.